Welcome back. Let's learn about variable expressions. All right, so up to this point in math, when doing calculations, you've most likely only worked with quantities whose values you already know or values that stay the same, right? They don't change in any way. But oftentimes we wanna discuss quantities whose values we do not know or values that can change. And this is really the main focus throughout all of algebra, looking at how to work with and represent unknown values or values that can change. And so to kick things off, what we do in algebra is we make use of the letters of the alphabet to stand for a quantity that we do not know or a quantity that can change. And by the word quantity, I just mean a number or a value of some kind. The most common letters that you will see used are X and Y, but really any letters can be used, including letters from other alphabets, such as the Greek alphabet, which is something that you will actually see in more advanced math courses down the line if you choose to study them. And so examples of that would be these three letters down here. You don't need to know what those are. I just have them here for show. The most common letters that you will see in algebra I have up here, which are X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and N. But as I said, you can really use any letter of the alphabet to represent an unknown or changing value. And when we use letters in this way, we call them variables since they can represent values that change or vary. And so when we write out mathematical expressions or just an arrangement of numbers and they contain one or more variables, we call those expressions variable expressions. For example, here I have a variable expression that includes an arrangement of numbers and letters, which we would call variables. In this case, there's two different variables in this variable expression. You can see that there are some X's and there are some Y's. And notice within this variable expression that just like regular numbers, variables can be multiplied, added, and subtracted from other numbers and even other variables. In fact, any operation that you can perform on a regular number you could also perform on a variable, right? You can see that within our variable expression here. We have four multiplied by X, and in fact, this X is being squared, just like we could square any other number. You can also see that we're multiplying negative two by Y, and over here, you can see that we're even multiplying X and Y together. So all of the operations that you have learned how to perform between different numbers that you know can also be used for variables, whether that's between a variable and a number that you know, or between two or more variables. Now, if we zoom back out a little bit and think of this variable expression as a whole, we could also think of it as being a combination or addition of different pieces that we call terms. And what I mean by terms are the different pieces that you can see being added and subtracted from each other within the variable expression. So in our example here, there are five different terms. They would be 4x squared, negative 2y, positive 3xy, negative x, and negative 7. One, two, three, four, five different terms. All right, essentially the different terms of an expression, such as a variable expression, will be separated by a plus or minus sign. Okay, and depending what is included within a term, we might classify it as one of two different types of terms. When a term contains a letter or a variable, we call it a variable term. And when a term contains no variables, it just has a number, we call it a constant term, or more simply just a constant, which is how I will most likely refer to them. All right, so in our variable expression right here, we have five terms, but not all of them are variable terms. The variable terms are 4x squared, negative 2y, positive 3xy, and negative x. And those are variable terms because they all include a variable. It doesn't matter what operations are being applied to that variable. All four of these terms have a variable, whether it be x, y, or both of them, and so they are classified as variable terms. Now, the one that we didn't look at on the end here, negative seven, that doesn't contain any variables, so we would call it a constant term. It represents a number that never changes. That's why we call them constants. The number remains the same. It's constant 
So that's the name we give to them. And so thinking about variable and constant terms, another way that we could define variable expressions is by thinking of them as being a combination or addition of variable and constant terms. And I say the combination or addition of terms because really you could rewrite this variable expression such that you were adding all of the terms together. And here's what I mean by that. We could write it like this. We could have 4x squared plus negative 2y plus 3xy plus negative x plus negative 7, right? Remember that adding a negative number or a negative value is the same as subtracting that value. So everywhere we are subtracting something, you could really think of it as just adding a negative term. And when you do that, it is helpful to include some parentheses around those negative terms so that you can clearly see the term and distinguish it from the other terms that are being added together in the variable expression. Okay, now constant terms are pretty boring. They just involve a number that we know, but variable terms are a little bit more interesting. They actually have two different parts. They have what we call a numerical coefficient and then a variable part. The numerical coefficient is just the number that you see in front of the variable. And that's how we like to arrange our variable terms. We always like to put the number first and then the variable second. It wouldn't be wrong to write x first and have x times three, which is what this represents, by the way. Three x represents three times x. You could certainly write it the other way around, but it is common practice to write the number first. And so in this case, for this variable term, three is the numerical coefficient and x is the variable part. It is the part that involves a variable, okay? And so that number out front, in this case three, while you could refer to it as just a number, the mathematically correct way to refer to it is to call it the coefficient of the variable term, okay? And that's a word that you will see used a lot throughout algebra and all math courses from here on out. If you see the word coefficient, it's just referring to the number in front of a variable term. All right, now a couple side notes about the two parts of a variable term. Something that you're going to notice is that coefficients of one or negative one are typically not written out explicitly. All right, so we don't really write one x, we just represent it with x. We would say that x times one is just x. Because just like with regular numbers, anything times one is just itself, right? Three times one is three, four times one is four. In the same way, x times one is x. So we'll just leave it as x, no need to write one x. And the same thing is true for negative one times x. Rather than write negative one x, we just write negative x, and that means the same thing. And then something else to be aware of as well is that a coefficient of zero usually doesn't really happen because if you have zero times anything, it's just equal to zero. So if you have a coefficient of zero, your whole variable term just becomes zero, which at that point, it's really not even a term. It's nothing. Okay, and so now that you are familiar with the two different parts of a variable term, let's actually identify the different parts of the variable terms from our variable expression that we looked at earlier. Remember that these were the four variable terms that we identified in our variable expression. We had 4x squared, negative 2y, 3xy, and negative x. Let's identify both the coefficient, or the numerical coefficient, and the variable part for each of these variable terms. Starting with 4x squared, the coefficient is just going to be the number in front of any variables. In this case, that would be 4. So I'll write down 4. And so then the variable part must be everything else, right? The variable part in this case would be x squared. It's the part of the variable term that involves a variable. So I'll write down x squared. All right, then moving on to negative 2y. In this case, the coefficient would be negative 2. You want to include the negative with that coefficient. All right, so in this case, negative 2 is the coefficient of the variable term which then means that the variable part must be what's left over, which is y, all right? And that makes sense because y would be a variable since it is the letter in that term, all right? Now moving on to 3xy, the coefficient would be three. That is the numerical value in front of the variables. 
So our coefficient is three. And then our variable part is both x and y, right? The multiplication of x and y together makes up the variable part. It's not just x and not just y, it's x times y. Okay, and then finally, we have negative x. This one might be a little bit tricky at first, but remember what we said earlier, when you have a coefficient of negative one, we typically just write it as a negative sign in front of the variable. All right, so in this case, you might be tempted to just write down that the coefficient is a negative sign. You don't wanna forget that it really represents negative one. So the correct answer for the coefficient here is negative one. All right, and so then that just leaves us with x for the variable part, and that makes sense because x is the variable in that variable term. Okay, and so that's how you go about identifying the different parts of variable terms from a variable expression. All right, now to close out this lesson, let's take a look at one more example. Hey there, real quick, before we get to the next part of this lesson, if you find my tutorial videos here at JK Math to be helpful, then I'd like to invite you to join my membership site, JK Math Plus, where you get access to many perks, including bonus content and my exclusive community. The bonus content includes dark mode versions of my videos, extra example problems, and more, while the community is a private space online where you can post questions, have discussions, and study together with me and other members. To learn how to join and see a full list of everything you get access to as a member, you can head over to jkmathematics.com plus. I'll have a link for that in the description of this video. So if you are interested in becoming a member, feel free to check that out. It's a great way to support me and the tutorials I make, as well as a great way for you to learn math better. But for now, let's get back to the lesson. For this example, we want to identify the variable and constant terms of the variable expression. And then for each variable term, we want to identify the coefficient and variable parts. All right, and so our variable expression is this right here. We have 5x cubed, or 5 times x to the power of 3, plus x squared, minus 2x minus y, plus 10. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is identify the variable and constant terms. Let's start with the easiest of the two. Let's look for any terms that don't have any variables. That would be our constant term. And looking at our variable expression here, there's only one of them, and that is 10. So 10 is very clearly the constant term of this variable expression. And what you'll find is that in most variable expressions, there will be at most one constant term. You could have more, but ultimately those numbers just end up being combined together. Because if you had plus 10 and plus five, well, why wouldn't you combine them to be 15? Okay, so that's a common pattern that you will see most likely there will only be one constant term in a variable expression. Okay, so now we've identified the constant term, which means that all the other terms must be variable terms because they all involve variables of some kind, right? All the other terms have either an X or a Y within them. And by the way, I didn't even count this to start, but this variable expression right here has one, two, three, four, five terms. So we had one constant term, which means there must be four variable terms, which would be these four right here. And so let's write them down. We have five X cubed, X squared, negative two X and negative Y. And remember to include those negative signs with those variable terms. All right. Don't forget that those negatives are associated with the term that they are in front of. All right, and so now we've identified the variable terms and the constant term, but then what we wanna do for each variable term is identify the coefficient and variable parts. So let's do that next. Starting with five X cubed, the coefficient would be the number in front of the variable. In this case, that is five. So we have a coefficient of five, which means that the variable part would be X cubed. So our variable part is X cubed. Moving on to the next variable term, we have x squared. The coefficient of x squared seems a little bit tricky at first because you don't see a number, but remember, if there's nothing in front of the variable, that just means that the coefficient is one. That variable is being multiplied by one. So in this case, the coefficient is one and the variable part 
is x squared. Then moving on to negative 2x, the coefficient would be negative 2. It's the number in front of the variable. And you want to include a negative sign if it's there like it is in this case. So our coefficient is negative 2. And so then that means that the variable part would just be x. And then finally, moving on to our last variable term, we have negative y. This is a little bit similar to our x squared term in terms of how do we figure out what the coefficient is. It looks like it's just a negative sign, but remember that actually represents negative one. We're multiplying y by negative one. So the coefficient in this case is negative one, which means that the variable part is just y. All right, and in each case, if you're not sure if your answers are correct, you can always multiply the two parts that you identified together and you should get the original variable term. Five times x cubed is five times x cubed. One times x squared is x squared. Negative two times x is negative two x. And negative one times y is negative y. Okay, and so that is it for this first lesson of algebra. If you do wanna get some more practice identifying the different parts of a variable expression, Feel free to check out the examples video for this topic that I have linked here on the screen. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.